Have you ever sent a salacious text to a lover? If you have, you're following the tradition of our ancestors. You may think people before the 1960s were prudes and didn't embrace the kink. Well, you're wrong. Our first specimen is James Joyce. Mr. Joyce was a poet and novelist born in Dublin, Ireland in 1882. And let's be real. Homie liked to fuck. A lot. He wrote a short story collection called Dubliners, 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 in 1914, and books such as A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, Finnegan's Wake, and Ulysses, the latter of which was banned for depicting shitting, fucking, fisting, public masturbation, and menstruation. So all the good stuff. Anyways, he wrote a series of letters to his wife, Nora Barnacle. Strap in and strap on, these are possibly the funniest uh, pieces of writing I've ever read. Truly, I feel like they, they broke my brain. Like, I feel like I couldn't comprehend what was going on because of how funny these things are. Mr. Joyce writes, It was you who slid your hand down inside my trousers and pulled my shirt softly aside and touched my prick with your long, tickling fingers and gradually took it all, fat and stiff as it was, into your hand and frigged me slowly until I came through your fingers, all the time bending over me and gazing at me out of your quiet, saint-like eyes. My prick was stuck up in you for hours, fucking in and out under your upturned rump. I felt your fat, sweaty buttocks under my belly and saw your flushed face and mad eyes. At every fuck I gave you, your shameless tongue came bursting through your lips. And if I gave you <laughs> and if I gave <laughs> and if I gave you a bigger, stronger fuck than usual, fat dirty farts came spluttering out of your backside. You had an arse full of farts that night, darling, and I fucked them out of you. Big fat fellows <laughs> Long, windy ones. Quick little merry cracks and a lot. <laughs> and a lot of tiny little naughty farties. <laughs> Ending in a long gush from your hole. It is... <laughs> it is wonderful. <laughs> it is wonderful. It... <laughs> It is wonderful to fuck a farting woman when every fuck drives one out of her. I think I would know Nora's fart anywhere. I think I could pick hers out of a room full of farting women. It is a rather girlish noise, not like the wet, windy fart, which I imagine fat wives have. It is sudden and dry and dirty, like what a bull girl will let off for fun in a school dormitory at night. I hope Nora will let off no end of her farts in my face, so that I may. <laughs> I hope Nora will let off no end of her farts in my face, so that I may know their smell also. It sounds like Nora and Yoda have some things in common. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I, I especially like the comparison of Nora's farts to fat fat women farts. It's like fat women let off disgusting, just like just rips wet shitty farts and Nora has these like cute kind of like cute farts it's a nice touch that he added I think that's really romantic another passage reads good night my little farting Nora my dirty little fuck bird there is one lovely word darling you have underlined to make me pull my there is one lovely word darling you have underlined to make me pull myself off better write me more about that and yourself sweetly dirtier dirtier another one reads fuck me if you can squatting in the closet with your clothes up grunting like a young sow doing her dung and a big fat dirty snaking thing coming slowly out of your backside big fat dirty snaking thing just think about that let it sit in your mind for a while just kind of kind of just toss it over in your brain just really really dig deep into that description this last one reads Fuck me on the stairs in the dark like a nursery maid fucking her soldier, unbuttoning his trousers gently and slipping her hand into his thigh and fiddling with his shirt and feeling it getting wet 
and then pulling it gently up and fiddling with his two bursting balls and at last pulling out boldly the mickey she loves to handle and frigging it for him softly murmuring into his ear dirty words and dirty stories that other girls told her and dirty things she said and all the time pissing her drawers with pleasure and letting off so here we go with the farts again and letting off soft warm quiet little farts behind until her own girlish cocky is as stiff as his and suddenly sticking him up in her and riding him. I don't know what a cocky is. I'm I'm guessing it's her clit maybe. I mean she's farting and her clit's getting hard. <laughs> is what I'm getting from this. Um but I, I just I really I really wish I could hang out with this man. James Joyce is the man. Just alpha energy all the way through. Our next historical horn dog is Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon was born in Ajasso, whatever, France, in 1769. He was a military commander, first consul of France, and emperor twice. He led military campaigns in Egypt, Syria, and Russia, just to name a few, gaining 70 victories and suffering 10 defeats. Not a bad win-loss ratio, if I must say so myself. He liked to write to his lover and later wife, Josephine de Beauharnais, whatever, while on campaign. Apparently, he liked his women to be a little on the crusty side because he wrote to her, stating, Home in three days. Don't bathe. An aide in his encampment during a battle allegedly wanted to wake him without angering him. So, he put a piece of ripe, stank cheese under Napoleon's nose. Napoleon woke up with a start and exclaimed, Josephine. Now, you can make your own decision on whether to believe this story or not, but I choose to believe it because it's really, really funny. I feel like having a stank fetish was the only way to enjoy getting freaky back then. Because literally no one washed their ass and was constantly shitting from it due to sickness from unclean living conditions. He also wrote a kiss on the heart and one lower down, much lower, to Josephine. So you didn't think they ate coochie back then. You're wrong. Again. Our ancestors were quite literally built different. Next time your girl or man smells a little funky while you're getting it on, just remember that James Joyce liked to fuck the farts out of his wife. That'll help. Probably. The last guy we're going to talk about is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, the supposedly deaf composer who liked shit. One of those is true and one is false. Apparently he wasn't deaf, like some people think, but he did like shit. He wrote letters to many of his family members referencing shit and or shitting, and some of these include flirtatious letters to his younger cousin. One of these letters contains the following. I now wish you a good night. Shit in your bed with all your might. Sleep with peace on your mind and try to kiss your own behind. I now go off to Never Never Land and sleep as much as I can stand. Another one reads, Now I must relate to you a sad story that happened just this minute. As I am in the middle of my best writing, I hear a noise in the street. I stop writing, get up, and go to the window. And the noise is gone. I sit down again and start writing once more. I have barely written ten words when I hear the noise again. I rise, but as I rise, I can still hear something, but very faint. It smells like something burning. Wherever I go, it stinks. When I look out the window, the smell goes away. When I turn my head back to the room, the smell comes back. Finally, my mama says to me, I bet you let one go? I don't think so, mama. Yes, yes, I'm quite certain. I put it to the test. Stick my finger in my ass, then put it to my nose, and there's the proof. Mama was right. So if you can't tell, he's farted and he doesn't realize it i guess and he's trying to figure out why it smells like shit in his room <laughs> and then his mom's like you probably just farted he's like oh he sticks his finger in his ass he's like oh that's it my ass smells like shit um but it it does it seems like mozart just likes to joke about shitting and farting i don't know if he had like a fetish like james joyce but um i don't know you never know you never know these fucking people Well, that's the only slop I have prepared for you today. Let me know if you want more slop, and I'll see what I can do. Peace.